Now let's move to Australia, where scientists say a, an eight centimetre worm has been found alive in the brain of an Australian woman. That is a world first. Uh, let's uh, speak now to our correspondent, Phil Mercer. Phil, uh, talk us through exactly what happened here. Well, you can only imagine the surprise um, within the minds of the surgical team at the Canberra Hospital in June of last year when they were operating on a patient who had for very many months been describing uh, a very long list of unpleasant symptoms ranging from stomach pains to night sweats, diarrhea, uh, forgetfulness and depression. A scan revealed a lesion or damage to part of her brain that led to this uh, biopsy in the middle of last year. And uh, when they were investigating the lesion, the surgeon found this eight centimeter long light red worm. It's a parasite. And it's the first time this type of parasite has been found inside a person. So um, clearly, um, when surgeons do this sort of brain surgery, they don't expect to find anything live within the brain, but that's what they found. And uh, this has uh, really led to uh, an extraordinary amount of research about uh, the potential dangers of disease and infections coming from animals into people. Of course, we know this with COVID-19, but scientists say that this particular brain worm case here in Australia is another warning that uh, these diseases from animals jumping into humans is uh, very much a growing concern. Phil, absolutely extraordinary. Thank you very much for that. Now, we have one of the doctors that saw that parasite, Dr. Sanjaya Senanayaka. Uh, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you, Lewis, for having me. What was, what was your reactions? What was your thoughts? How did you come to see it? So our laboratory in the hospital, our microbiology laboratory, got a call from the surgeon saying, We've just discovered a live wriggling worm in this patient's brain. It's something we've never seen before. Help us out. And as the on-call infectious diseases physician at the time, my laboratory colleague involved me and we got to work trying to determine what this worm actually was so we could treat this patient. And we looked through all the possibilities and realized it might be outside the realms of normal human parasites. And Canberra being a small place, we were able to send it up the road to the CSIRO where an animal parasitologist confidently made the diagnosis. So this worm was successfully extracted, was it? Look, it was uh, all eight centimetres and it was alive when it was removed from the brain by our neurosurgeon, Dr. Bandy. And it was alive when it reached the microbiology laboratory and it was alive when it got sent uh, up the road to our colleague at the CSIRO. Uh, then he dissected it and that was the end of the worm. <laughs> that was the end for the worm. Um, absolutely extraordinary. And, and do we know or are we allowed to release any details about how the worm got in? No, look, absolutely. And uh, what, what we believe has happened is this. So normally this parasite lives in carpet pythons, which, is found, which are found all over Australia. The eggs of the parasite get into the python feces, which small mammals or marsupials normally or accidentally consume when they're eating foliage, etc. The parasite develops in them until another snake comes along and kills the marsupial or small mammal and then the life cycle completes itself in the python. What we think has happened here is that our patient co collected some native grasses called warrigal greens for consumption, and we think the python feces and parasite eggs have contaminated that, and by touching that and eating that, she's unfortunately inadvertently become infected. So she's an accidental host. Every every detail of this story gets more, gets more and more extraordinary. Um, what's your kind of personal slash you know, professional reaction to it? Look, I think everyone's grabbed onto the, the yuck factor, the live worm being removed from the brain. But look, even if you remove that, there is an important, a couple of important take home messages here. Even though there's been a, there's been a hundred years between true pandemics. 
new infections are appearing in the world all the time. There have been 30 in the last 30 years. Three quarters of those are animal infections which have, in, have infected human beings. And as our burgeoning human population encroaches on animal habitat, habitats, that interaction between humans, domestic animals, wild animals and uh, flora will lead to more of these infections appearing. So that's really important. Also, this parasite is found in snakes in other parts of the world. So raising awareness of this case may lead to the identification and treatment of other cases around the world. It's absolutely extraordinary and fascinating. Sanjaya Senanayaka, thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank you. Thank you.